I'm Rob from Smart Boat Innovations. Thank you for joining me on this journey to transform your boat into a smart boat. Whether your boat is old or new, my goal with this channel is to assist you into turning into an incredible smart vessel. The best part is you don't need to be a tech whiz to achieve this. I've designed the content specifically for those with no technical background so everyone can benefit from it. In today's video, we'll set up your anchor light to be controlled by a virtual switch and enable automatic on-off functionality using the Shelly One Relay. The Shelly One is a well-engineered Wi-Fi controlled relay switch commonly used in home automations. It has a huge following and integrates easily with the Home Assistant. The Shelly One costs about $15 US. There are other more cost-effective options, for example, this 8-switch relay board from AliExpress, which costs about $20. I had this installed in my boat, but it's much more complicated to set up and does not integrate easily with Home Assistant. Maybe a subject for another video. You can follow the exact same procedure for any other 12 volt light or device on your boat. For example, deck lights, external horn and bilge pump. By the end of the video, we'll cover the following steps. Set up the Shelly One for 12 volts. Explain the various wiring options available. Connect the power and undertake basic configuration with the Shelly app. Connect the Shelly One to Home Assistant via Wi-Fi. Update the Shelly One firmware. Create a virtual switch in Home Assistant. And finally, we will set up an automation that will turn on and off the anchor light at sunset and sunrise. So let's get started. Shelly One Relay, when it comes from the factory, when it's new, it's set up to use mains power. So we need to change it to use 12, 12 volts. There's a little inspection port to see where the jumpers are, but that's really what it's for, just to have a look. If we want to change the jumpers, we're going to just take, quickly take the case off, put a coin in here, rotate it a little bit, and the case will just pop off. And there, there's the jumpers, just like in the diagram, we take them off. There's a common pin. There's three pins and the central one's a common pin. We put it onto the other two pins. Gently push it down. And put the case back on. It's easy if you put one end on gently first and then clip on the second end. And there we have it. The Shelly One relay is ready to use for 12 volts. Okay, now we're going to connect the 12 volt supply uh, to the relay. We'll have the 12 volt switched off, of course, before we wire it up. The positive goes into the N, which is the first terminal, and the negative goes into the L, which is the second terminal. It's a little bit counterintuitive because L is live and N is neutral, but for 12 volt, it's, it's, this is the way you set it up. And there are also little positive and negatives on the relay to say which, which, which terminals you should set it to. Now, once, once this is connected and we power it up, the relay will start its own private Wi-Fi um then so we'll be able to configure it also with just just as 12 volt connected like this we can actually test the relay so we once we have a virtual switch if we turn it on you'll hear this relay just make a slight click sound if we need to turn it on it will click and when you turn it off it will click so you know it's actually working so on your phone or tablet you need to install this shelly smart control app uh, i'm using my tablet here so we just have to open it up. Then we need to uh, log into this, open an account, but if you don't, you need to do a sign up. Let me click on add a new device. Um, we want to scan the scan using a Wi-Fi, which is it's, it's the private Wi-Fi the Shelly device will, will use to communicate to it, so it will find it that way. Then it's going to ask us which Wi-Fi network do we want to change it to. So we're going to change it to our boat's Wi-Fi. We need to enter the password. And we can remember this Wi-Fi for other switches we want to configure. So select yes. So it's now reconfiguring the, the switch from its private Wi-Fi to, to now use the boat's Wi-Fi. So we select the switch which is a Shelly. And we want to include this, this device on our, on our Wi-Fi.
like I said, then we have to. Now, while you do this, it's actually lost the internet connection, so you might have to go back to your onto your Windows and reconnect to your main Wi-Fi. So it's now searching on our Wi-Fi for the the Shelly that it's found it. So we click on Add Device. Um, we'll give it a device name here, just Anchor Light. Uh, we're not going to select a room. This is only temporary what we're doing with Shelly. So let's add it that. It's pending connection. So it's now connected by Wi Fi. Now, to make access to this device easier, we need to add it to the dashboard. So we're going to add a widget here to the dashboard. Select the type of device. It's a device. Uh, we're going to, it's in the hidden devices. So let's select the anchor light. Save it. And then here we have, a, we have a switch, and we have the anchor light with a little on-off switch. We can try it out, and the light should come on and off. If we select the whole device, on the right-hand side, it's going to come up with the controls for this device. What we need to do now is go to the settings and update the firmware to put the latest firmware on. There's no idea how long this, how old the Shelly is, how long it's been in the box before you received it. So it's always best to update the firmware. Let's update it. Okay, and then you can actually try turning it on and off again, see if it works. If in, actually, in the Shelly app, it's quite powerful. You can actually set up uh, schedules here to do the switching on and off in sunset and sunrise. I'm not going to go through it, but here it is. We're going to do that in Home Assistant. So we now need to connect to Home Assistant. I'm using my laptop because I find it easy. But equally, you can use your phone or your tablet. So we arrived at the, the main dashboard that we have that's been set up. We don't have anything here yet, but we soon will. So what we need to do is go down the left hand side, we go down to settings, and then devices and services. There's a, the first option is integrations. And you can see here the Shelly switch, it's been discovered. If by chance it hasn't been discovered, which might happen, down the bottom right hand corner there's a there's a button called Add Integration, and then you type in Shelly here, and you do a search, and you click on Shelly here, and you can do the same same as we're just going about to do now. But it's been automatically discovered by Home Assistant, so we click on Configure. Uh, do you want to set this up? Yes, Submit. Like it's found this following device, it's going to add it to an area. Um, it's only got default areas for a house, so let's add a new area. I like to add all my switches to a switchboard, just like we have on a boat. So add, and then finish. Okay, we can go have a look at this device. On the top left, this has device info, the firmware. There's actually a visit link, which will take you to the, the web page, the Shelly web page for the, for the device. Which is quite cool. Let's just go back. There's no automation, scenes, or scripts set up. And then we have the sensor, which is the switch. Um, it's asking us to add it to a dashboard. But before we do that, let's actually go set up a dashboard. So we go down to settings, and then we scroll down here until we get, get the dashboards. At the bottom right, we add a dashboard, and let's call it switches let's choose an icon for it let's see what switch icons i have uh, let's choose this one little dip switches and create um, so on the left hand side now you have a dashboard called switches let's go to it now by default home assistant populates the dashboard with it all the devices you have. We haven't got many. It's got it's put our switch here, but it's got all the sun and other things which we don't really need. So what we're going to do is up the top here, we're going to select edit dashboard. And we, we want to start with an empty dashboard and then we want to take control. Okay, and then we click done. So we have an empty dashboard. Then we can go back to settings and to to integrations, device and services, integrations. 
select our Shelly relay and we've got the control here and then we can add it to the dashboard it's going to say which dashboard we have switches this is a suggested thing but we're going to pick a different card so it has a different look and feel than the default so pick a card we want a, a button uh, we want to give it a name otherwise it's going to come up with this Shelly name so let's, quick, let's call it anchor anchor light and the icon again let's see what light icons they have let's choose this light outline one show a name on the on there show the state which will show it either on or off and that's pretty good let's click on save successfully saved let's go to our dashboard on the left switches and here we have our anchor light and hopefully if we click on it it turns yellow and the light turns on Now we're going to connect the light to the Shelly relay. The fuse positive, it goes to the number one terminal and the zero terminal gets connected to the light. This is a basic uh, circuit where we're only going to have a virtual switch. We don't have a physical switch in this scenario. Um, so the virtual switch by home assistant, we can turn on the light or off the light. For this demonstration, I'm actually just going to use a light bulb, not a light on top of the mast, the anchor light, because it's much easier to demonstrate what's happening. So when the relay turns on, it joins terminal one and zero together. So the current will flow from, from one to zero and the light will go on. Normally have a physical switch that, that switches the positive, like in this diagram here. Um, basically the relay is wired in parallel to the switch and it's this option you're most likely going to implement another option is the Shelly option where the switch actually switches the negative uh, and it's connected to the SW terminal of the relay one benefit of this is that the home assistant can sense when someone's physically turned on the switch as opposed to the other diagrams you can't tell if the physical switch has been turned on or off the downside of this is that you have to rewire your switches because normally the switch is uh, switched on the positive, but it's, it's something to think about. Now let's test out this light. I have my tablet with Home Assistant. And we turn on the light and wow, the light comes on. And we press it again and it goes off. And let's press it again and it comes on. And we press it again and it goes off. It's just like a child. I remember the first time I got this, I kept on pressing it. It's quite cool. Now we want to add our automation so it switches on and off automatically. So let's go down to settings scroll down to automation and scenes the first one is automations so let's bottom right let's create an automation create a new automation so an automation has has triggers conditions and the action what it's going to do so the trigger here is going to be sunrise and sunset um, you can possibly be put a condition if you like if, say if the speed of the boat is more than one we don't want the anchor light to turn on there's many conditions you could possibly put um, but for this example, we're just going to do a basic trigger and an action. So we add the trigger. We go down to the sun. So when the sun sets, uh, then the action. We want to click on the action. We're going to call a service, and the service is, is actually switch on. So we want to switch on. Uh, let's just choose the entity in this case. And we have the Shelly. So we go to save. Uh, let's give this a name. Don't need a description because the name is very obvious. Now, it is possible to, in, within the same automation, turn the light off. Let's just choose an easier way. I'm just going to create another automation that will then will turn the light off at sunrise. Okay, so we can go back probably here, add a create an automation, create a new automation, either trigger with the sun, here at sunrise. You can actually put an offset in there if you want one hour before or half an hour before sunrise. Uh, the action again will be calling the service. The service will be a switch switch turn on sorry switch turn off and 
then we're going to choose the entity, which is this Shelly again, and then save. Give it a name. And save it. We, we don't have the anchor light on. Turning it off again when it's already off, it's not going to make any difference. But there are more complicated automations you can do, which which check if it's on. But this to just to demonstrate how this works, this is sufficient. But you can actually test these automations. So it, it, it says here if it's been, ever been triggered, it's been never been triggered. So we can try actually turning it, run the automation and it will just run it and it should turn the light on. And same with the, this one as well, turn it off. Also by default, these uh, automations are enabled, but if you don't want them running, say you're off the boat or in the marina, or millions of reasons, you can go, you just go to here and you go disable, disable both of them, and then they won't run. And that wraps it up, I think. That's, we've, we've added a virtual switch for the anchor light, and we've set our automation to turn it off and on, this sunrise and sunset. Uh, if you don't want to use sunrise and sunset, you can use a time as well, but you just have to change it when the, the seasons change. Thank you for joining me today and exploring the incredible world of smart boating. If you found this video helpful and informative, I would appreciate if you hit the like button below. And if you'd like to stay updated with more exciting content on boating and technology, consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Your support means a lot and helps me create more valuable videos like this. Until next time, hasta luego!